There are car restoration reality shows, lifestyle reality TV shows, and then you have the hazard-strewn fishing reality TV shows. Fishing reality shows are way different from other reality shows, considering the associated dangers. That is why Deadliest Catch is not one of your regular reality shows. It's tough enough that the show is centered around fishing, but more dangerous for being a crab fishing show. Alaskan crab fishing is definitely one of the 99 ways to die. But guess what? The crew members of the show still manage to serve us great content over the years. It's definitely not a walk in the park for a fishing show to run from 2005 to 2022. No wonder the fans have grown attached to the crew members. To us, the crew members' doggedness is a thing to learn. Josh Harris is a good example. Despite his difficulties over the years, alongside his father's death, Phil Harris, he hasn't quit going for gold. You got somebody watching over him. And that guy right over there. So, what happened to Josh Harris? What's he been up to? How about we find out together? It's common knowledge that commercial fishing is a dangerous profession. Deadliest Catch is not an exception. As a matter of fact, the show showcased many shipwrecks that occurred through the years. Sadly, lives and properties have been lost in these wreckages. Fortunately for Harris, he has been able to survive the turbulence. Despite his father, Phil Harris, who died as a captain, Harris has maintained his vigor. Resilience must be a virtue he learned from his father. Josh and his brother Jake were exposed to the fishing culture very early in life following their parents' divorce. Their father, Phil, took responsibility for the two boys, and that explains why the two boys are always on fishing vessels from a young age. It didn't take long for them to become their father's ship deckhand, and ever since, there has been no going back for the boys, Harris especially. He revealed that his father's death caused him to resent fishing for some time, but not for long. He knew he needed to take care of his family, whose direct responsibility falls back on him. Keeping the resentment against fishing was not something he could hold on to for so long. His resilience finally paid off in 2013 when he acquired his captain's license and claimed his seat as a co-captain of a ship for the first time. There is nothing negative that has managed to drag Josh into the news or headlines for some reason. Josh is still very much in the fishing business, and he has been living, protecting the legacy his father left behind. In addition to that, Josh is taking care of the vessel his father partly owned. Cornelia Marie came under Josh's care following his father's death, sharing ownership with Captain Casey McManus, who the vessel was named after. I guess this information will answer questions pertaining to the whereabouts of Cornelia McManus. Fans were concerned when Casey McManus wasn't featured on the 13th season of Deadliest Catch, which rarely happens. The circumstances surrounding the vessel's disappearance on the show are still unclear, Meanwhile, following fans' questioning, Josh put out a post on Facebook at the time, claiming that not appearing in the season's deadliest catch wasn't his decision, but discoveries. The disappearance of the vessel didn't sit well with fans of the show. Some of them were sad about it, while others channeled their anger towards Discovery Channel executives. In the long run, it appeared that the clamoring by audiences yielded some results. In 2017, Josh announced that Cornelia and its crew members were coming back on the show. By 2019, Josh and Captain Casey decided to give the vessel a facelift. The revamping was aired on a special episode, Casey and the New Cornelia Marie. The result of the revamping gave the vessel a new outlook, and modern features like propellers, radar systems, and wheelhouse were added to the ship. After the renovations, the audience was surprised that Josh no longer shares the captaincy of the vessel with Captain Casey McManus. Actually, there is no bad blood between the two. Relinquishing captaincy by Josh was of his own free will so it is crucial to point out that Josh is still involved with Cornelia Marie as much as Casey McManus. What happened was that in 2021, Josh was offered the co-captain seat of the Time Bandits by Captain John Hillstrand. At first, Josh was skeptical about accepting the offer from Captain Hillstrand, wondering if leaving his own ship was the intelligent thing to do. He eventually accepted since the agreement has time specifications and he can always resume on the Cornelia Marie whenever the agreement lapses. Besides, he considered Captain Hillstrand as family. He's not just Josh's friend, but he was close to his late father, Captain Phil. Another reason is that the Time Bandit needed extra hands at the time. Captain John Hillstrand's second-in-command was down with COVID and could not join the fishing season. Josh discussed his plans with Casey, and he agreed to his decision. So fans that are worried about Josh neglecting the vessel, rest assured, he is coming back to his seat as a captain on Cornelia Marie. In addition, Josh is still an active member of the Deadliest Catch, and even waxing stronger at it. 
In 2021, he was among the cast as the main star of the Discovery spin-off series, Bloodline. The spin-off follows him and the entire crew through the search for Phil Harris's fishing guides in Hawaii. Meanwhile, the search took them through the big Hawaii islands while trying to achieve their crab fishing goal for that season. Similarly, Josh's relationship with his brother is equally getting better. Their relationship has moved from being estranged to improving for the best recently. We all know that Jake has been through different legal issues. Through it all, Josh has been a good big brother to Jake, supporting him on his way to recovery. The duo were seen and photographed together during the holiday seasons. Also, Josh's immediate family hasn't suffered in any way. He has been a proud dad of his only child and daughter, Kinsey Ella. Regardless of all the ups and downs that come with crab fishing in the Sea of Alaska, Josh tries to be a present father to his daughter. However, it is unsure if Josh still maintains his relationship with the mother of his child, Jenna Bullis. What is really noticeable is how happy he always appears on several Instagram posts, staying by his daughter's side. It's a known fact that money is undoubtedly one of the topics people have a big desire for when it comes to public figures. If it's about a reality star, the interest doubles, if not triples, mainly because the salaries in this TV genre usually remain a secret. While we're all certain that you're all curious about Josh's net worth, we thought to let you know that the figure with us is not official. It's actually assumed that Josh's net worth is approximately $800,000 from his TV appearances, the income from Cornelia Marie's fishing season, and the money he inherited from his late father. The speculation is that some deckhands make as much as $30,000 per show season as crew members on Deadliest Catch, while the captains make a more significant chunk of $50,000 as salaries. That means that Josh is making that amount, if not more, meaning he makes a good amount of money from his appearance on the show, which is not bad. Another stream of income for Josh is the earnings he makes from his commercial fishing business. Josh supposedly makes $80,000 per year from commercial fishing. Safe to say his financial situation is not bad. Well, if there is something we can't deny, then it has to be that Deadliest Catch has been immensely successful. Our definition of success is not simply about the TV ratings or fame alone. For us, it is about how the show has impressively garnered several nominations, totaling around 100 and won 28 awards over the years. Meanwhile, despite being famous for its production quality and content, the truth is that Deadliest Catch has been through its fair share of poor reputations surrounding reality TV shows. One of such instances has to be when Josh and Jake were accused of being on the ship only to appear on TV. This accusation dates back to 2011, when Derek Ray was interviewed, revealing that the Harris brothers had too much of a bad attitude after they took Cornelia Marie's seat following Phil Harris's death. In Derek Ray's words, Jake had put the ship in danger by conducting some misconducts, while Josh was incompetent and didn't want to have a career in the fishing business at all. However, the two brothers later confronted Derek during an After the Catch episode. They expressed how Derek Ray's judgment about them was flawed and misplaced. Regardless, the confrontation was too late, as the audience held on to Derek's claim. After that, it took Josh a while to recover the audience's trust, although the incident is still remembered by many. Although, when it comes to his father's legacy, Josh has been trying in every way possible to follow his step. Whether he does that by writing a book about him or searching for the loss of Phil's past in Hawaii. One thing is for sure, Phil's legacy won't be forgotten soon. At least, not by Josh. Do you guys feel the same?